to the video on my channel. Hey guys. I know I haven't done a video in a while. I am so sorry. But like I said, I've been working on some things. My neck has been hurting. I can turn it this way now and it's not really hurting. But this way it still hurts a little bit, but not as much. But it's getting better. Thank God for that one. Um I'm actually wanting to come to y'all on this video and I want to talk about somebody special in my life. This person has been there for me through thick and thin when I'm down and out and I need help. He was there for me. He was a little overprotective. Of course, most fathers are overprotective. Um, my dad passed away in 2006. He's been gone seven years. Um, and he was special in my life and I'll try to link I'm going to link it down below the two videos that I was watching today that made me think of my father and I really do miss my dad I'm always wondering if he's looking down on me from heaven if he noticed all the bad things I did he tried to protect me and he did I did a lot of things in my childhood that was wrong that I should not have done I don't I'm not gonna say a lot of bad things there are some things that I did my dad didn't know that I did that I shouldn't have done when I was younger um, I'm also gonna say I'm sorry to my brother I know my brothers ain't watching this video but if they ever do watch this video I'm sorry for taking your stuff breaking your things and if I ruined your life as a youngster, I'm sorry. I do remember my brothers having to clean my room and cleaning up after me because I was living in a pig pen. <laughs> my brothers hated cleaning up after me. To tell you the truth, I think my brothers really hated having me as a sister. Because they always had to clean up after me and if Christina did something wrong they got blamed for it and I didn't get punished they did and I want to say I'm sorry for that bros to my oldest brother I'm sorry I stole your cigarettes I actually my oldest brother used to smoke and threw out 100s and I would steal his cigarettes <laughs> And I'd give them to my ex-husband, actually, because I was dating him back in high school. We were high school sweethearts. And I would take the cigarettes and give them to him. <sighs> bad, bad, Christina. But also, behind my parents' pats, I got in trouble at school for chewing tobacco. The first time, my friend... Um, I still see the wrong name. I want to say Marissa. Marissa? I can't think of her name right now, but I know Stephanie was one of them. Patricia. Patricia. I get it right. Patricia. Patricia and Stephanie and I, and there was somebody else that was with us. We were all on the same drill team. And our drill teacher said, oh, outside, and we had to run. And I remember being outside, and they said, hey, come on, come on. And we tried tobacco for the first time, and we got in trouble, but Patricia's the one that bought the chewing tobacco. The big chief. And we chewed the nastiest tasting ever. And I don't think my parents, I don't think the school ever called my parents and told my parents, well, actually I don't remember. But I did get in trouble at school once because my teacher thought I was selling porn magazines to Corbin Rouch and actually I was giving him the porn magazines because my brother had them and I stole them from my brother Brian 
family of Corbin. And a good friend of mine, Donna Ray, which we call him Don Ray. Woo! Nice, the sweetest, nicest black boy you'll ever know. He is so sweet. And I really did like him as he was a really good friend, and I liked him as a really good friend. And she thought I was selling him to him when I was selling candy on the drill sheet. And I got in trouble for that. My mom had to come to school. And of course, my mom jumped down my throat, and my dad did too, but. I got in trouble. I couldn't go to my best friend's house for three weeks and spend the night because I was usually at her house on the weekends. I'd go to her house and spend the night, stay up, play Barbie dolls. I had a really good time. We played with our new kids on the block dolls and our Barbie dolls. And I was married to Joe and she was married to Jordan. And it was so, so good. But I couldn't go to her house for three weekends. I could see her every day at school. I could hang out with her at school. I couldn't go to her house after school, and I couldn't spend the night at her house. And that wasn't a good thing, because <laughs> we were like sisters, and we were inseparable. If something happened when, well, something actually did happen to her, she pulled ligaments in her legs, in her ankle or something like that back then, and I think it was in junior high when she did it in her foot. Of course, she did hurt herself, and I felt bad. The same day she got leg, her foot hurt, I was spending the night at her house, and she couldn't walk, so I had to go get her mom and her dad. We took us to the emergency room. That night, I broke my baby toe on her bed. And her father said, do I need to take you to the emergency room? I said, no, I'll be okay. If you got popsicle sticks, I can fix my own foot. Some electrical tape. So he gave me some electrical tape, and he had a popsicle stick. I, of course, we ate some popsicles, and we broke the popsicle stick in half, fixed it, and taped up my toe. And I said, my toe will be fine. But unfortunately, they did call my parents and told my parents I broke my baby toe or bruised it. And it was bleeding. And I know I broke it because I couldn't move it and it was hurting like a mother skunk. And when I got home, my mom looked at it and I said, yeah, it's broken, mom, but I popsicle sticked it. It's all right. It's taped up. It'll be fine. I said, I just need to stay off of it and not walk on my foot. And so everything was good then. There is so much that my dad did for me. Um, the first boy I ever fell in love with was in kindergarten. His name was Max. He was so cute. And I remember one time, my brother Brian hung out with him, and I remember ice cream truck was in the apartment complex where he lived on the opposite side of the apartments that we lived in and he looked at me and he said sweetheart with his gorgeous little smile with his yeah my teeth are yellow his blinding yellow teeth he has some yellow teeth he had white and yellow teeth i think his top teeth were white and his bottom teeth were yellow Anyway, would you like an ice cream? And I remember him buying me an ice cream. And the eyeballs were made of gumballs. And I ate it. And it was so delicious. I think it was, I think he had Bert and I had Ernie. And there were ice creams back then. Because I was really into Sesame Street when I was in kindergarten. <laughs> um, so... That was the boy I, my very first kiss I had was in kindergarten. And I could always go to my mom and tell my mom I was in kindergarten. I didn't want to tell my dad nothing. Unfortunately, my brother opened his big mouth and he was in there. He said, oh, Christina kissed a boy. And my dad said, what? Yeah, I, yes, I kissed a boy. He said, you were too young to kiss. I said, uh, how'd you learn how to kiss? 
the TV, duh. I said, Mom, Dad, you just go up and go, Mwah. He said, oh, yeah, that's how you kiss. He didn't tell me, Prince, kiss, put your tongue down somebody's throat, just like that. I'm sorry, I'm picturing my husband and kissing in my head, and that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. But anyways, and then I like got a little older. Um, I this boy Pumpkin. His parents used to babysit me. He had a brother named Weddle and a sister named Penny and Shannon. His sisters and. I got hit on them. Well, anyway, that was the first boy, the second boy I kissed, and the first time I ever saw a boy's, I'm not going to say it on here, and I remember I had to take a number two, I went in the bathroom, and he said, oh, you'll go faster if you hold mine, so I did. That was the first time I saw my first real, hmm, and the first time I ever touched one was in kindergarten. Weird, huh? So, I kind of told my parents, when I got home, I, he wanted to play house, and he wanted to sleep naked and play house, and... I knew it was wrong. So I said to myself, Well, my mom's here, so I gotta go. We'll, we'll have to play house another time. And when my brother came to get me, he brought me upstairs. He said, He walked in, my oldest brother, and he walked in and said, Something ain't right with Christina. And I, and I said, I'm fine. Which was a lie. Then I told my parents what had happened. And they went to his parents and told his parents. And they, he tried to deny it. And I said, don't lie. You wanted me to play house and sleep naked right there on the couch with you. I said, I'm six years old. I'm not ready to be a non-virgin. To be a virgin. I'm a virgin. I'm not ready to be a non-virgin. I'm not ready for sex. I'm too young. But he wasn't in kindergarten. He was in actually third grade. So my parents said I'm not allowed to be alone with him in the house. And of course my parents were paying them to babysit because my mom worked and my dad worked. And so then my Father says, because I think I got out of school before my brothers did. My brother, brother was in junior high. Both of them were. And so, they had to find somebody else to babysit me because they didn't like them babysitters anyway. And I remember they took us, and we went to Galveston one year to go. He want her... His dad wanted to go fishing, and he fished, and we played in the waters in Galveston. And I had to go number two so bad that she yelled at me for pooping myself because she wouldn't let me go to the bathroom. And I could have opened the back door to the car and sat right there and did things. But no. But anyway, and then, of course, I got older. And I dated my next-door neighbor, and his mother took us out. And we went to McDonald's and got a kid meal. And then we went to, from McDonald's to Strawberry Park. And we ate at Strawberry Park and played and ate McDonald's and had a good time. Big of the state was wearing a dress because I shouldn't really wore a dress. I should have just put on pants and a shirt. But my mother wanted me to look good for my first date. And that was my first date. <laughs> Nothing really happened. My dad was shocked and things like that. But what really freaked my father out was when I was 12. I was at church. And I started my period. And 
and usually in Sunday school we'd raise our hands if we wanted to get saved and baptized and I raised my hand and to go try to get saved and baptized to get God in my life and really I just wanted to get out get on the bus, be a Christian on the bus and get that candy and so I left and I went to the bathroom and when I got in there, I saw blood in my underwear. And I was like, oh my God, I'm bleeding. And I knew about periods. My mom didn't tell me about, you're gonna get older, you're gonna have periods, and blah, blah, blah. So when I came out of the bathroom, and here's the bathroom over here. We'll say, okay, we're gonna do this. The bathroom's over here, and over here's the nursery. And I'm in the bathroom, and I come out of the bathroom, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm bleeding, I'm bleeding, I'm bleeding. And the nursery lady says, and she goes, what's wrong? I said, I'm bleeding. She goes, where? So I pointed downstairs, and she said, oh, you just started your period, sweetheart. She goes, how old are you? I said, I'm 12. She goes, you know, I said, my mom's going to tell me all about it. But how are you going to get your period? And I was upset. So on top of that, It was okay. I got what I needed, and the lady called my mom. I gave her my mom, dad's number. She called my mom and told my mom. And I said, I can come and pick her up. And she goes, well, she goes, church is almost over. So um, she gave me a pad to wear, and then I put it on, which was okay. But when I got home, my mom looked at my father and said, Jack, I got to take Christina. We're going to go to Walmart. I got to get some maxi pads. Your daughter started her period. He said, ah, shit. And he said, damn it, she's becoming a woman. And my mom was thrilled and she was happy and she always. She had told me when she was younger, when she had a little girl, she started her, when she, she little girl started her period, she was going to treat her with respect and do something nice for her. So, of course, my brother Brian went with us, and my mom says, since you started your period, we're going to go to Walmart and get you some pads. And she goes, I'm going to buy you some new underwear. And she bought me new underwears and an outfit and since McDonald's has always been in Walmart she says we'll get something at McDonald's to eat I'm like okay well my oldest brother shows up and I dad and he says what's wrong dad he goes god dang sister started a damn period <laughs> and that's when my brother's said it's time to protect my sister. I do remember I think I was in junior high and I remember I can't remember what his name is but this boy beat the living crap out of me. He had on cleats because he played baseball. He kicked me in my ribs, my side. He literally bruised all down he was all bruised up and he beat me up and he says that's for going around telling people we're dating when we're not you like me you're not unlike me and he beat me up and i was like i hate doing it but i have to go my boy so when i got home i had tears in my eyes i was crying i'm not gonna lie i was crying and my parents said to me what's wrong i said this boy kicked me and beat me and tell me my Told him my brother was there. He says, "You think it's okay to beat on a girl?" She goes, and he said, "I said I wasn't doing that. I never went around school and said we were dating. I said I liked you. I'm saying we were boyfriend and girlfriend." So things happen. The next thing, the next day, I got kicked. In the groins down here in the private part by a girl wearing combat boots. Hurt like a. Yeah. I went home crying, told my mom, she came back. 
the lady and my mom got into it and they were arguing back and forth and the girl that kicked me there her friend had spent the night with her she goes yeah she just got out and just kicked christina there and, and uh, kicked her in the, the wrong spot and christina didn't do nothing so my mom said it's only fair for my daughter to get to hit your daughter for no reason and I didn't hit the girl. I didn't do nothing. <clears throat> the lady and my mom was going to fight. And I said, Mom, let's just leave it alone. It's the only thing we can do. we got a new witness right here. If she's willing to testify, we'll take them to court. Now, another time I got into a fight was with this girl. She came up to me. Literally beat the living shit out of me. Said I caught her friend. The B word talking about her friend behind her back which was a lie and she literally beat the crap out of me and my I was walking home with my friend Sharon she stopped in her tracks she Sharon literally ran this girl was kind of chunky she was kind of big but not you know she was probably my size now she ran all the way to my house and she goes knocks on the door I said, what's the matter? Christina's down there getting her ass whipped. That's exactly what she said. And my brother said, okay. So my brother Brian went down there to see what was up. And I stole my mom's bottle of poison perfume. And I whacked her inside the head with the perfume. She beat me. And I was hurt in my ribs. And I was crying because it hurt really bad. But I beat the crap out of her. So I was bruised and sore, and she went to school. She had her arm in a sling, and she had a bruise, a bruise on her face from the perfume bottle that hit her face. It didn't break, but it did break here, but right here left a bruise. And she told everybody at school that she kicked my butt, and I was in the hospital. And she came out with just a bruised arm, well, actually a broken arm. And she had a broken arm and a broken finger. Because when I broke her arm, literally chomping on her arm, I, her finger was like this. And when I stepped, it went like that, popped the knuckle. And this knuckle here broke. This knuckle right here broke. So she went to school and said all that. I stayed home the next day. I didn't go to school because I was still sore. The following day I went home, I didn't have a, nothing wrong with me, I was still a little sore, but nothing was wrong with me. And it went around school, my teachers really thought, you know, I was in the hospital, I did get beat up, but I didn't. Excuse me. So, to make a long story short on that one, she lied, and I got the respect from other people at school that respects me. For beating her up and if it wasn't for my father who was there for me then and who was always there for me i miss my father so much that sometimes i wish he was here i really do i miss him so much i'm gonna try to link the songs down below that made me today remember my father and you can have a listen to it and you'll understand a lot of it. I'm sure you've probably heard the songs many times all over YouTube. Um, one of them is Dan and Liz Dancing in the Skies. And every time I hear that song, I want to ask my mom and my dad, what is it like in heaven? We don't know. I don't know. I know what it's like here on earth, and I know here on earth we're living in hell because we have people who want to shoot up schools and kill children and kill people for no reason. I can't lie. I'm scared. I'm afraid to tell my son and my daughter-in-law that I'm scared for my grandson when he starts school that the school he goes to 
What happens if somebody goes through that elementary school and goes to nothing? It's going to hurt. It's really going to break my heart. But I do know this much. I know my mom and my dad and my grandmother is watching over my grandson because it's their great-grandchild. It's hard to believe that my mom and dad are great-grandparents. And I know they're watching him from heaven. And I'm sure my daughter-in-law, if there's any family members that have passed away in her family, I'm sure they're up there watching him and her. So, I'm going to end it at this. I would like to say if you are new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope I see y'all in my next video. Till next time. Bye, guys. And remember, don't forget to hug your loved ones before bedtime. Give your loved ones a call. Tell them how much you love them. Because someday, they may not be here. Cancer. Diabetes, whatever. Something could kill them. Until next time. Bye, guys.